In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do this really trippy shockwave displacement map effect. It's a really cool way of using the free overlays that I'll have linked down in the description to get a really cool effect. So follow along and learn something new. Before we get into the video, I do wanna let you know about my new After Effects plugin, Shake Sauce 2. It's by far the easiest way to apply Shake in all of After Effects. There's custom presets, a new UI, and it's super responsive. I'll have it linked down below with a seven day free trial. That way you can try it out 100% risk-free, cancel at any time if you don't absolutely love it, but I guarantee you're gonna love it. Let's get into After Effects and break down this effect. So here in After Effects from the Dom Corleo Mona Lisa music video, I added this really cool like displacement map kind of trippy effect. You can see the shock waves and everything going through. It's a kind of like a subtle effect, but I think it looks really clean and you can see how it's like distorting just certain areas where the shock waves going through. And like I said, I'll have the shock wave overlay that I'm using linked down in the description. But let's go ahead and make a new composition and then go ahead and find where we want our effect to take place. So right here for us. And I want the effect to take place like right here, kind of like where he's like pointing like a gun. So let's go ahead and see right where it transitions between the clips. I'm gonna add a marker here and then let's go ahead and find a shockwave from the shockwave pack. I'll have it linked down below. You can use 4K Video Downloader. It's a free app to download the video off YouTube. That's exactly what I did. And now we just wanna find a shockwave that we think will look cool. So I'm kind of just playing through all the footage. I like this one right here. So I'm gonna go right to where it starts and click Control Shift D and then just trim it to the length of the shockwave. So we're gonna go till it ends and then click Control Shift D. And then what I'm gonna do is actually time remap this. So right click, go to time, enable time remapping, add a keyframe at the beginning, add a keyframe all the way at the end, and then just drag the ending keyframe to make it way, way faster. So you can see our hits right here. Let's go ahead and turn it on screen just so we can kind of see what's going on. So we kind of want it to end probably like right around there. So let's go ahead and bring that last keyframe here. And then that's gonna make the shockwave just happen way faster, just like that. Just something really subtle, just like that. So let's go ahead and split it there, delete that. And now we have the shockwave effect. And what we're gonna do to get this distort effect on the shockwave is we're actually going to go ahead and turn off the layer and then make an adjustment layer above that layer, just like that. I made that adjustment layer to the exact same size as my adjustment layer using my plugin workflow by just clicking adjustment layer. I'll have a link down in the description. I don't really talk about it too much. It's super, super helpful for saving time. Literally, all you have to do is like, if you want it to be the length of this clip, just click on the layer, click adjustment layer, and then it makes it the exact same length versus like normally you go right click, adjustment layer, control shift D, control shift D, cut, cut. So saves a little bit of work. If you're someone that makes adjustment layers, solid layers, text layers, stuff like that all the time, it's literally a no brainer. It's gonna save you so much time. But on that layer, we are going to add an effect called distort chroma. And you can see it kind of has this effect over everything. And what we're gonna do to get it over just the shockwave is go to mat from layer and then select that free shockwave layer. That way you can see now we have the distort, but it's only happening on the shockwave itself. So before it was like this, and now it's just happening on that shockwave layer. And what I wanna do is actually go ahead and make the shockwave like synced up where, where his hand is. So you can see if I go to the transform options and we actually go ahead and move around the position, even though it's moving here like this, it actually doesn't change the place of the effect you can see. So what we have to do is find out where we want the effect to take place just like this. And let's go ahead and key from the scale and position to be exactly with what we want. So let's go ahead and scale it down right here. And then maybe scale it up over time and kind of just keep it tracked to where we want it really roughly. So now you can see it's in the right place, but if we go ahead and turn off that layer and turn back on the displacement, it actually did nothing. So what we need to do now is just pre-compose this layer. And now you can see it will be tracked in the right spot, just like how we had. So now I'm gonna go through and just change the amount of the effect. You can kind of see what the different looks you can get if you change the amount, the blur lens, I think making the blur lens up a little bit and maybe the amount, something a little subtle. I think this effect's really cool because it's kind of just like a subtle kind of looking effect. And to sell this effect a little bit more, I'm gonna add an effect like ripple onto the background layer. And what we can do is keyframe the radius, the wave width and height, and then also the center ripple. So let's go ahead and turn the ripple radius up a little bit and then also the height and the width just so we can kind of see it for right now. And then let's go ahead and put that ripple right there. And let's just go ahead and track the ripple first and foremost. So just kind of make it match his hands the whole entire time, just like this. 
So just going through and putting it on his hand the whole entire time. That way there's the ripple there. And now we need to go through and actually keyframe the effect itself. So let's go ahead and turn down the radius all the way. So it's zero and it pops up there. And then as the effect happens, let's just go ahead and turn down the width. Let's go ahead and turn down the height the width a little bit and then the radius all the way down as well. And now you can see there's just a little bit of this effect here and we can actually go ahead and make the radius kind of go out first. So it goes no radius, smaller radius, kind of spreads out a little bit and then goes back down. And then let's go ahead and highlight all of this and easy ease it. That way it just looks a little smoother. And we can also add an effect like optics compensation on here. And that will really help kind of make it look a little bit more trippy too. So let's go ahead and keyframe the field of view, check reverse lens distortion, and then also keyframe the center view. So we want that center view to be right on his hand, kind of right, right, right where that ripple is. And let's go and keyframe the field of view. So it's a little intense at the beginning. Go through, just make sure that positions proper all the way through. And then at the end, we can bring that down a lot as well. And we can even turn up the intensity a little bit. If you have chromatic aberrations, this would also be a cool effect to add on here. Universe chromatic aberrations, very similar to optics compensation. And you can keyframe the master distortion and then also the edge blur here, and then bring that down over time as well. We should probably keyframe the radial blur as well. And one thing that's really gonna help sell this effect overall is going to make a new adjustment layer. And then on top of that, adding something like RSMP on that adjustment layer. And it's just gonna like make the distort just look a lot more trippy. As you can see, like the difference between having it on and having it off is like pretty night and day. You can probably turn down the intensity a little bit. And then also what I'm gonna do is go to right where this like hit takes place. And then inside of Shake Sauce, use a preset, something like maybe light and apply it right on this hit. And then I'm actually just gonna change the point where the hit kind of takes place because I think it should just start a little bit later as it ripples out. And then as you can see with the RSMB, the shake, I think it really sells the effect all together. You can see it's a really simple effect, but it does just kind of sell a little bit more energy, kind of have a cool little VFX thing. It's nothing super, super flashy, but I'll try it out in your next video. If you made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. If you haven't already, drop a like on the video. And if you want to try out Shake Sauce 2, I'll have it linked down below for that seven day free trial. That way you can try it out 100% risk free. If you don't absolutely love it, you can cancel at any time, but I guarantee you're going to love it. It's going to sauce up your workflow a lot, but that's all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.